She has a football team inside of her. Oh dear. On this week's Bondi Vet Top 5. She is jam full. And I look out the window and I see how many people I've got. I think, have I got enough? Yeah, I said she had to move it along. I did. When you've got that many puppies that are all jammed inside a confined space, there's a lot of things that could go wrong. So who's on puppy catching duty today? At number five today. This is a good girl. At the Bondi Clinic, Jen's anxiously waiting for her appointment with Chris. I'm very nervous. Um, she's, she's only two and um, this wasn't meant to happen. English pointer Jewel looks pregnant and it was definitely unplanned. That's why we're here, right? Yes. She doesn't belong to me. She's my son's dog. Yeah. And um, he left her in my charge while, we, while he went overseas to work. And um, she got out with our dog. And I'm not quite sure what she's been up to. I have a bit of an idea. You'd expect that I'd be able to touch her stomach and feel the puppies, but her belly wall is so tight, I can't feel a thing. X-rays will confirm whether this is a phantom pregnancy or the real thing. Big moment, Jen. You see her? She has a football team inside of her. Oh dear. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. But how can they all be in there? <laughs> 11 puppies is going to be a huge ask on Jewel, and the reality is if she was de-sexed, she would never have been put in this situation. The world's already got enough puppies that don't have homes. We probably don't need to add to it with any more. But you look at Jen right now, I don't think this is going to be a mistake she'd make twice. Oh, hello. With the pregnancy confirmed, Jen now has to come clean to her son. He thinks there might be about 11 in there. 11 puppies? Yeah. Oh. So I guess I should say congratulations. <laughs> yeah. No, do you want a dog? <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's going to be hard. My son's away. Uh, my husband's away working. Um, it's just us. Um, I really don't know that I can cope with it on my own. Um, I would hate to think that she got into distress and um, we had trouble. So how's everything going? Yeah, she's okay. She's had one. Yep. But um, nothing since. Okay. Two days after Jules' visit to the clinic, a call from owner Jen gets Chris out of bed. Just try to keep it calm. Is she, is she pushing at the moment? Jules' huge litter of pups is on the way. Hello. Hello. <laughs> now you're dad, aren't you? Yeah. So we've had one? Yes. And nothing since? Did you take a number early, did you? First in the queue. We're now at about two and a half hours since the first puppy was delivered. And, and that's not ideal. You'd normally like them to be followed up pretty quickly, usually within about half an hour. Dad. Dad's just getting involved when he needs to, coming out and saying, hey, Jill, I'm loving your work right now. You're doing great. If you need me, I'm inside. But until the next one's delivered, I'll probably be asleep. But keep up the good work. This is going to be a very long process. I'm just weighing up right now whether I intervene, whether I actually give her an injection of something to really stimulate those contractions to come on. Just remembering how much longer she still has to be in labour for. Jen, we got another one. In Jules' maternity ward, it's been three hours since her first pup was born. At least ten more are on the way. Someone's come a little bit breach. Back legs first. Oh. There we go. Come on, I'm not breathing yet. Come on. Oh, yeah. Another one, Jen. Oh, look. There you go. It's just gurgling a little bit. <laughs> the puppies are now coming quickly, and Jewel is turning out to be a natural mother. 
I'm not surprised at all. She's a good girl. No, Dad. <laughs> it's a girl. It's, it's a, a girl. What? <laughs> 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 It's time for Token the Dad to have a closer look at his progeny. We call it dog paternity test. Comes the sunrise, Jen. Good morning. There <laughs> <laughs> we go. Yeah, small little one. But when the fourth puppy arrives, it is not responding. Another one. You want to do that one there, Jim? Just break that membrane open. In a litter this big, it's rare to get them all out alive. And that's what you've got to remember, but I'm just going to give it every chance. No, I'm not getting anything here. Despite mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, there is no sign of life. Sorry, Mum. It's not looking good at this one. It's just a sad reality, unfortunately, Jen. When you have this many puppies inside the womb, one of them ultimately ends up in a bad place where they just can't really grow and, and get all the nutrients. I think this is the one that's, that's been the case. It's very good to have Chris here. I'm not sure how I would have coped with that one. At the maternity ward, daylight has arrived. One puppy has not survived, and there are seven more to be delivered. Everybody is exhausted. But there is no let up yeah. for the first time mum. Oh yeah, look at you go. You are gonna be trouble, aren't you? There you go. Okay. She wants it over, but it ain't over yet. No, you do you take it, Chris. Jules also increasingly happy just to hand the duties over to me. So, buddy, if you're still here, you know the drills. <laughs> Look at little pandas. It's now seven hours into the ordeal, and Jewel's given birth to ten puppies. Jewel is totally floored by the whole experience, and he's just trying to summon enough energy to push out these last couple of puppies. But the worry I have is that the puppies still inside her have been there for a long time, and that uterus has been contracting for a long time. We need to get them out before they go in through any more stress. So I'm going to give her some oxytocin, which causes more forceful contractions of the uterus and, and just helps her, because right now she's so weak, she's unable to really push them out. So this is number 11. Maybe the final one. <coughs> Going on the sound of you, you must be a boy. Yes, you are. After a marathon eight hours, Jewel can finally relax. One puppy has died. But the proud mum has ten healthy babies, seven boys and three girls. Hey, Jill. We're all done. OK? You've done your work. Well done, girl. Which one are you taking? Not that one, not that one. <laughs> I'm taking this one. <laughs> Straight to the surgery <laughs> to be <VT> decent. <sex. laughs> Did you hear that? It seems to be a valuable member of our birthing team missing in action. I think Dad, token, clocked out about baby number five. It hasn't been seen since. You rest well, did you? Good night's sleep? Don't worry about us. But he's too little too late, surely. All I wanted was one moment with all the puppies. After all we've been through. Pretty clear she's a very devoted mum with very little faith in the men in her life.
pretty sure I overheard Jen saying how all her hard work was done and now it was all up to Jewel to look after the puppies. Yeah, that's until she has to find homes for 10 puppies. How are they going? <laughs> They're great. When Jewel delivered puppy after puppy, I really had my concerns that she'd actually be able to feed all of them. But I turn up today, they're not just surviving, they're thriving, they're fat. She's done an amazing job. Four weeks later, and the puppies will soon be ready to leave their mum. One of the new owners, Alan, just can't wait. I think she's adorable. <laughs> I don't know, when I first saw her, I knew that I had to have her. When you consider the start of Jules' adventure, with this unplanned pregnancy was far from ideal. The ending now, with all those puppies having fantastic homes, like Ellen's, that's a nice outcome. Number four. At Scott's Isleworth practice in the UK, Sinaz is bringing in very, very pregnant mum-to-be, Cardi. Hi, Sinaz. Morning. Hi, good morning. Oh, my word. Wow. Oh, wow. Look at the size of you, missus. She just looks like a hippo, don't you? Look at that so tummy. Oh, she's absolutely piled full of babies, isn't she? Do you think she's going to make a good mum then? I think she will do, yeah. Yeah. She's really good with the kids. Scott is doing important last minute checks to make sure everything is okay for Cardi's caesarean birth. In this picture, there's one there, and then there's one there. Yeah. And then there's one there. 18 month old French Bulldog Cardi is a first time mother. She's such a good girl. Oh, there's another heartbeat there. Cardi, she looks absolutely gigantic and she is stuffed full of puppies. And the unfortunate thing when it comes to French Bulldogs, they struggle to give birth naturally. To be able to pass all these puppies, and there is so many, there's gotta be eight, nine, 10. How are you feeling about the risks involved with the actual cesarean itself. I'm feeling nervous now for her. I'm just hoping that everything goes well for her and the puppies. Her puppy is actually looking very healthy. The hearts are beating really nicely. The ultrasound and blood tests have given Cardi the all clear for the big surgery. Thank you. Bye. Hi there. Hi. Hi. Oh look, it's, it's a pregnant ladies conference. <laughs> Suddenly, Scott's day is about to get a whole lot busier. <laughs> Look at that. Two expectant mums. With not one, but two heavily pregnant dogs ready to deliver their pups at any moment. Bye. Guys. All right, bye. bye guys. See ya. Bye. bye. Right, Shana, let's go. Shana has just arrived with her three year old English bulldog, Kelly, who's also about to give birth at any minute. Hello, baby. Hello, how are you? As a vet, I've performed quite a few caesareans, but I've never performed two on the same day. And being that both the mums are friends, they just thought, you know what, we'll all have this uh, <laughs> bit of puppy pandemonium together. Do you want to see your babies? Yes. Good girl. She's such a nice girl, isn't she? Hey. We have been anxious and nervous. It's both our first experience having a litter of pups. All right, my angel. Unlike Cardi, Kelly has had a tough time with her pregnancy. I'd just love for us both to see a heartbeat. You know, but... Kelly has had quite the checkered pregnancy. During the course of it, she's had an infection. And on ultrasounds, we've seen areas that look like puppies but don't have a heartbeat. So there's a number of things for Kelly, for me, and for Shana to be worried about. It's no one's fault. It's, you know, sometimes unfortunately pregnancies end in heartbreak. Yeah. Um, and there may be an element of that with you guys. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. Big day. Big day. In Isleworth. Scott is about to perform back-to-back -back caesarean deliveries for Shana's English Bulldog, Kelly, and her friend Sunaz's French Bulldog, Cardi. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Oh, hi, girl. Today is going to be a huge day. 
I am feeling a little bit nervous. It's a lot of lives to manage, it's a lot of people to manage, it's going to be crazy, there's going to be puppies flying in all different directions and I'm not sure of the outcome. She looks like a very exhausted pregnant mum, she can't breathe. The heavily pregnant Cardi will be the first to give birth. Scott's concerned she's carrying a huge litter for such a small dog. The adrenaline's pumping, everyone feels it. It's a big operation as far as Cardi's concerned, but it's exciting. We just hope it all goes well. The first cut is always the tricky one because you've got babies right underneath. So a millimetre will mean perfect incision or cutting a puppy. Performing a caesarean is a big thing. It's putting a dog that's already massively pregnant under anaesthetic. It means that the puppies are also under anaesthetic. Nothing about this is natural. Okay, team, everyone ready? Okay, this one. Okay, go for it. As the puppies start arriving, Scott's support staff swings into action. Come on. Come on. This one's grasping. It's crucial to get each puppy breathing before it's too late. Two. Okay. As soon as I open Cardi up, I'm like, wow. There is a lot of puppies in here. She is jam full. And I look out the window and I see how many people I've got. I think, have I got enough? Has anyone else got a spare set of hands? We've got three out so far. I'm yet to hear any cute puppy noises, so that's never good. How much breathing? Okay. Okay, go for it. That's it, that's four. Okay, I've got another one. Sorry, guys. Okay. My team are working on all these puppies. I'm just not hearing them crying. I really want to get stuck in and trying to rescue and save as many of them as I can, but I do need to focus my attention on Cardi, so I'm really torn at the moment. Come on, just keep rubbing it. Hey, I like that noise. I think we're at eight. And the fact that we've got seven support staff means that we've <laughs> run out of hands because uh, some of them have taken a long time to recover. So I normally wouldn't recover puppies, but um, needs must. So thankfully Cardi's doing really well under anaesthetic. I keep pulling out puppies and I see everyone working on their puppies, but more and more and more puppies keep coming out. I'm gonna have to start getting the guys running out in the street and getting passes by. Come and help us. We've got two in here as well, so... so it's ten now. So it's ten now. <laughs> as Scott and the team fight to save Cardi's puppies, her owner Sunaz and daughter Aria are anxiously waiting for word of their beloved family pet and her offspring. So the kids are looking forward to seeing the puppies um, and seeing them grow. So we are excited both to see the puppies and just see Cardi come back to her usual lively self. Any improvement on four? No. But several pups are still not breathing, so the team is using ultrasound in the faint hope of detecting a heartbeat. I still have seen something moving and I don't see any movement. No. Um. There's four which are doing well. There's one which is still occasionally gasping, but the other, I think six, probably aren't going to make it, unfortunately. Wow. Right now, there's four puppies that are breathing, which is great, but there's many more that aren't. Just keep grabbing it. I know the team are doing their very best and working really hard, but there's going to be a few broken hearts out there if they don't get those little hearts beating. Come on. Just keep grabbing it. We've even got a receptionist, Will, working on all these puppies because there's just too many to handle. Scott has delivered the last of Cardi's 11 puppies. So my one come out completely blue. So far, only five are alive and well. Desperate to revive the others, Scott is using mouth to mouth to try to get the tiny newborns to breathe. I don't accept no for an answer very often. So I want to try and get my hands on them and try and work on them myself for as long as I possibly can to give them the chance of life. He's gasping, you need to make sure he's breathing. 
but really after half an hour maybe, if you're not having a breathing popper, you probably won't get one. Okay, all right, well, we're just gonna call it there, guys. Uh, no one did anything wrong. You all did your best. Um, just our best wasn't good enough on the day. So, yeah, it's just, it's very sad. Out of a massive litter, little Cardi has safely delivered five healthy puppies. Come on, my angel. Here we go. Ready? Good girl. Come on then. That's it. Okay, three go. Oh, baby, yeah. Come on then. It's sleepy time for new mum Cardi. Okay, good girl. But no rest for Scott with caesarean number two, this time for English bulldog Kelly. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's a pretty mammoth task that we've all been through, but now we just need to suck it up and keep going. Uh, we've got another pregnant mum that needs help. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have to uh, go again and hope potentially for a better outcome. An earlier ultrasound had Scott worried when he had trouble detecting any heartbeats from Kelly's puppies. OK, Kelly. Here we go. Happy positive vibes. I think Kelly is maybe like four puppies, which is much better. Having just less puppies means that each one's getting more nutrition, so we're just more likely to, to survive. But some of her puppies haven't got the, the sharpest of heartbeats, so. As Scott begins surgery, Kelly's owner Shana and her son Tyrone are eagerly waiting for news of their adored three-year-old. I think Kelly's having four to five puppies. My youngest son is very, very excited and can't wait for the puppies to come. He's adamant that we're having them all. <laughs> I've told him we need to save up and get a bigger house first. Whoa. Suddenly, something no one expected. So it looks like there's just one mammoth puppy. Kelly, she's had a very different pregnancy to Cardi. She has this whopper of a puppy and then some strange other bits of fleshy tissue within the uterus, which would suggest that this guy did have siblings, but unfortunately they didn't make it through to full term. Imagine just waking up and then someone doing that to you. <laughs> to everyone's relief, Kelly's one very big puppy is doing well. Yeah, so at the moment he's looking good. He's, he's nice and pink, he's moving, he's shouting at me to stop rubbing him. So all good signs so far. He really is incredible. So you know what? Callie might only have one son, but he is a stun. It's bittersweet today because you know we know we've lost you know, a lot of Cardi's puppies, but thankfully she has still got some puppies to look after and love. And Kelly has her one puppy safe and intact. So you know, as a team, I'm very proud of what everyone's done. It's a hard day, but we've all got through it, and we've got some happy, healthy puppy lives to look forward to. Makes it all worth it. Put them in there. Come here, baby. Want some mummy? Let's go. After a gruelling caesarean birth, French bulldog Cardi is about to introduce her new family of five to her human mum, Sunaz, and her daughter, Aria. Are you excited? Yeah. Hello. Say hi. All right, do you want to come and meet her babies? Yes, you little cutie. Come on. Let's go see them, shall we? <gasps> so we got, how many pups? We've got five puppies here. Five. They're nearly as cute as you. I'm not sure exactly as cute, but nearly as cute. We've got a good result. We've got five lovely happy puppies. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Do you say? Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, my gorgeous girl. Delivering the news to Sanaz that Cardi had 11 puppies but only five of them made it is a tough conversation to have. But at the end of the day, our focus needs to be on the living. We need to make sure that these puppies make it and of course make sure that mum Cardi makes it too. Thanks, guys. See you later. As Sanaz leaves with five new arrivals, Shana and son Tyrone eagerly wait to greet Kelly's new baby boy. We're very excited to meet our puppy and we want to see what he looks like so we can think of names, don't we? Yeah. And here's the puppy. Oh, Aww. Hello, my little girl. 
We are over the moon. Very proud. So it's your beautiful boy. Happy kid. He's stunning. Absolutely stunning. He is exquisite. I'm in love with his colouring. <laughs> oh, wow. You are definitely mine. You're staying with me. Oh, is that right? Of course he is. He's the only one we've got. You're staying with me. <laughs> it's so nice to introduce Shana to Callie's puppy. It's such a beautiful moment. And although, yes, it's a bit of a shock that she only had one. She's got one healthy puppy. He's absolutely gorgeous. Come this way, beautiful. I know. I'm coming with the puppy. Don't worry, I'm not stealing him. Don't you worry. I am so exhausted. It's the emotional exhaustion that comes with the roller coaster, which is bringing life into the world. I definitely need a good lie down. And will I do two caesareans in the same day again? Probably not. Hey guys, look who I've got. Hello. Oh, wow. It's a month since Callie gave birth and Shana has brought her new mum and baby Kenji to reunite with Scott and the team who brought him into the world. What a good job you've done. Look at him. Thank you guys for all your help and support throughout this whole process. You've been amazing. Mum and son are both doing well, but like many new babies, Kenji is a handful. It's really nice to see him and Callie playing together. Now he's at the age where he's running around the house and biting her, bless her, and she's just trying to get away from him. Yeah, it's very exciting. It's very nice. There you go. Oh, All right. Congratulations. Oh, it's a boy. It's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right. My beautiful boy. See you soon. Bye. Bye. See ya. This week's number three. I've been an ambassador for Assistance Dogs Australia for years now and I've just had a call from their CEO, Richard Lord, to tell me that one of their dogs has gone into labour. Now, that's interesting, but what's really fascinating is where she's giving birth right now. It's 11pm and Chris is heading to a very unusual maternity ward. Our girl's giving birth in jail. At the Emu Plains Correctional Centre west of Sydney, Chris is met by the manager of security, Angie West. So we've had one puppy. Yep, one puppy. Yep. There's no doubt this is an extremely strange situation to be let into a prison to deliver a litter of puppies. It's not every day you do that. I'm Chris. I'm Jodie. How are you hey, going? How are you? For 10 years, assistance dogs pups have been raised by inmates in prisons around Australia. But this is a groundbreaking moment in the program when you remember that this is the first time ever assistance dog puppies have been born inside a prison, it's a pretty special night. And for me as an ambassador, it's one that I was never going to miss. This is Brielle. This is Brielle. And she's just been panting like this. Panting, yep. No straining. Only pushing the pup out, yep. yep. Prison inmate Jodie's been Brielle's carer for the past four months and delivered the first puppy on her own. I knew something was going to happen. She gave me a look of help. Help me, please. I just patted her and let her know that I will be here for her the whole way through. We've got a puppy just coming actually coming. Okay. Just let her give her a final push. Yep. Okay. And we're away. All right. I'll just get this sack yep. up and nice and quickly. So we're wriggling, which is good. I'm just gonna tear that umbilical cord. Like that. Let me do her work. The worry with a small puppy is that even a small amount of blood lost can be pretty significant. I just need to tie off the umbilical cord. If you just hold it there. Yeah. So that's why I go to the clamp straight away and stop that bleeding. Yeah. X-rays have indicated Brielle is expecting a huge litter of 11 puppies. The thing that I guess is worrying me right now is the fact that she's going to become exhausted no matter how she approaches this. It's going to be a long night for her. It's going to be a long night for all of us. Almost an hour since the last puppy. I just want to feel and see where these puppies are at the moment. She's still quite big, so we know there's still quite a few puppies in there. I have a very strong bond with Brielle. These pups are so special, and we've had such a big involvement in the whole process. They've become a whole world. Where's your puppies? I can feel a puppy engaged in that birth canal, and from there it should be 
on the fast track on the escalator going out, but it's, it's just sitting there. The issue I have in that birth canal is it's narrow and it compresses the puppies. If it compresses those puppies for too long, then the blood no longer goes to their brain and you can lose them there. So we might give an injection and, and get things moving. An oxytocin injection should induce stronger contractions. All right, so we're getting some contractions. Yep. Oh, look. Finally, Brielle delivers another puppy. Here we go again. She might want to see. I don't think Brielle really knows what's happening. And another contraction there. She's sitting and there's a puppy there. So they're coming thick and fast right now. Yeah, it said she had to move it along. It did. The fact is I'll take them lying down, sitting down, upside down. Whichever way they're coming, as long as they're coming out, I'm happy. Oh, there we go. We've now got five puppies out, but when you look at Mum, she's starting to look pretty tired, and that worries me because she's still got a lot of work to do tonight. And if we start to lose her, then all those puppies still inside of her are in big trouble. Here we go. Well done, girl. Big one too. Yeah. Brielle has just given birth to puppy number ten. <laughs> this one's trouble. Straight away, you know. <laughs> when they're born, it's almost like they're a member of the royal family. They can't hope to understand what lies ahead of them. They have this destiny. They'll grow into being assistance dogs. Dogs with such an incredible purpose. Got anything more in there? Yeah. I'm just gonna push. It's obviously been a big ordeal for her to get 10 puppies out to this point, but I guess she has to muster all her reserves for one final effort to produce this last puppy. Right now, it's really hard to tell whether Brielle's work is done or whether my work is far from over. You have a better out than I wouldn't know that personally, but that's what they tell me. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, where's the other one? Where's the other one gone? At the Emu Plains prison, it's been more than 30 minutes since Brielle delivered her last baby. X-rays had shown she was expecting 11 puppies, but it looks like technology got it wrong. She just looks like she is. She looks like she's satisfied. Inmate Jody and Chris are now convinced the long labour is finally over for this patient mum. So now I feel there, and I just can't feel anything else. So I think that... That's it. That's it, yeah. Ten's not bad. Not done. You know, there comes a time in a young man, man's life, where they ask you what you're going to be when you're older. And I can tell you. And you're going to be an assistance dog, aren't you? Well, this is just the start of something massive. They've got such an important role with people with disabilities. They're born to give the best to somebody that can't give the best to themselves. I would never have imagined being able to be a part of something like this. They're in very good hands. OK. All right, take care. OK, thank yes. you. No problem. I would hope after everything I've seen tonight and how amazing Jodie's been, that assistance dogs might look at her and go, you'd make a pretty good puppy raiser and she can have at least one of these puppies. You're such a good girl. Yes, you are. You're such a good girl. I can't describe the love I feel already for Brielle and these pups. Number two. Come on, girlfriend. Up on the Gold Coast at the Animal Emergency Service, Marie has arrived with her heavily pregnant golden retriever, Greta. Good girl. Come on. Greta is fun-loving. She is the light of my life. So I'm coming in today to get Alex to have a look. Here she is. Good Good girl. Girl. She's looking ready. Very pregnant. Isn't she? <laughs> You're looking wonderful, aren't you? Glowing, I think, would be the way you put it. Aww. Alex okay. needs to determine exactly how many puppies they could be dealing with. All ready to pop those pups out. I wonder how many you've got in there. When dogs have puppies, there are a number of things that can go wrong which is why we do x-ray and ultrasound. Come on, let's go. Good girl. My dog's not going up there unless the table's clean. What are you it has doing? It to be clean for my girl to get up there. Marie 
isn't just a client, she also works with Alex. She's the kennel attendant in our hospital, which means she pretty much cleans this whole place. All done. We call her Nana Marie because she really is like our Nana. Hey, Greta, how are you doing? Gerardo is my life partner, but he's also my partner in the hospital. Greta, come over here. Come Greta. And he's very helpful when it comes to heavy lifting. Oh, oh my Girl. So how many puppies do you think she's got in there, Marie? I think around about 10. I'm going to go with 12. You're going with 12? Yeah. We'll see. Jeez. Let's see. Eight. Eight, 10, 12. It's always a bit of a guessing game as to how many puppies are in there. You ready, sweetie? I'm just going to roll you over, Greta. Good girl, good girl. There you go. That's my girl. Ready, team? I think we've pretty much got all of her in. OK, I'll press the button. One, two, three. Find out if I'm the winner. Look at that. Whoa. Look at them all. Wow. There's a lot of babies. Look how there. crowded they are. There's yeah. not room for all of them. They must be fighting for space. With the x ray showing multiple puppies overlapping, Alex is concerned some might not be getting enough oxygen or could be crushed. When you've got that many puppies that are all jammed inside a confined space, there's a lot of things that could go wrong. Literally filling all of her belly there. Owner Marie and vets Alex and Gerardo want to settle a bet and find out how many puppies there are. Here we go. One, two, three. We've taken the x-rays and guess what? 10, 11. Really? 12. There's 12 puppies in there. Alex has won the bet, but now must investigate the possible complications of such a large litter. All right, let's take her through. We know we're there. Any pregnancy comes with its set of risks. She's got 12 puppies that she needs to push out, and she may just become exhausted and not be able to deliver all those puppies herself. If at any stage we feel like she's in trouble, then we would have to discuss about whether we would need to take her to surgery to do a caesarean. The health of each pup is also critical, so Alex must now perform a vital examination. Ultrasound will allow us to see how healthy the puppies are. So we'll be looking for the heart rates of the puppies and that'll help to tell us whether they're in any distress or not. So there's the heart beating. The heart rate for this particular puppy is 185 beats per minute. It's a perfect little puppy heart. It is crowded in there, isn't it? I don't think anyone wants to be that close to their brothers and sisters. <laughs> So is it possible because there's so many puppies crammed in there that we could be coming into some trouble? That is possible. When you have that many puppies in there all fighting for nutrition and, and blood supply, it can mean that some of them are not getting the nutrient supply that they need. Because if some of them are in distress, it does happen sometimes that we'll have to get in there and get them out quicker, do a caesarean if we have to. You do what's necessary. Marie? These tests help us to give us more information, but really, we're not going to know how things are going to go until it actually comes time for her to deliver. OK. Now, we can't possibly see all of the puppies on ultrasound, but the ones we can see look healthy, and that's really good news. So everything so far is looking good. Perfect. Thank you very much. But the news is bittersweet for owner Marie. Hi, Dan, darling. This is where I have to totally rely on, on you Alex, because... I'm not going to be here, I don't think. I have to fly over to New Zealand. My mum's... My mother's dying. So, I fly out tomorrow morning. I'm staying there until she passes away, which is probably going to be within the next 48 hours, so I totally have to rely on you, Alex. And she'll be a bit well looked after with my friend Judith, who's flying over from New Zealand to look after her for me. You take care of your mum? Yep. Judith and I can look after Greta. Obviously, we're going to let you know how we're going every day. Um, and when it's time for her to have the pups, we'll be there with her. I feel like I'm letting Greta down, but I'm not, because I know that you're going to be there, so... Good girl. It breaks my heart to leave her, but it would break my heart more if I wasn't with my mum. The most important thing now is for you to be with your mum. Yeah, my mum 
was diagnosed a few weeks ago with terminal cancer and there is not much hope of her lasting until the weekend. Marie, you know we're going to look, take really good care of her and look after her. Thanks, mate. <laughs> if Greta can just hold on till Tuesday, I'd be the happiest person in the world, but if she can't, she's in really good hands. I trust her with you. We could really start to see Greta deliver these puppies at any moment. And so I'm going to be there for her in every way that I can. You try and wait. Mm -hmm. On the Gold Coast, the moment is finally here. After a long wait, Greta is in labour. Good girl. You're doing so well, Greta. And she's already delivered five of her 12 puppies. She just got into it and knew what to do and off she went. Sadly, owner Marie is in New Zealand to be with her terminally ill mother. So daughter Melanie and friend Judith have been on puppy watch. A little stressful, but me and Judith have been a good team, so it's been good. But with so many puppies expected through the night, they've called in vets Alex and Gerardo for much needed help. When I got the phone call, I turned to G and said, I promised Marie that I would be there, so let's go. Hello? Hello! Oh my goodness, it's all happening! <laughs> Hello! Sure wow. is. How many have we got so far? Three boys and two girls. Wonderful. Marie is going to be so excited. Are you cleaning your puppies already, Greta? She's just been amazing. She's just acing this. The licking that she does will encourage them to take breaths. Although Greta's doing an incredible job helping her puppies to breathe... Oh, and we've got some pushing there. ..she's feeling the strain of delivering such a big litter. And puppy number five is struggling. He smells a bit blue, hey? Yeah, he's a bit quiet, that one. Yeah, I'm rub him before a bit. She's a first-time mum. She's got a lot of puppies. There's a lot of things that could go wrong. <laughs> yeah, when they're born, their lungs are filled with fluid, so they have to quickly get rid of that fluid to try to then get air in their lungs. Some of the reason why Mr. Blue looks a little bit blue. A little bit blue, he actually. He looks a little bit blue. Gerardo's vigorous rubbing <laughs> works. It's better. Yeah, and I, I think there's another one on the way. Here we go, we've got a puppy. Puppy, your yeah. tail? Come on, push little darling. Oh, with good girl Greta. Puppy number six arrives, and it's a little boy. So this little pup's still got the placenta attached, but we're just going to let Greta have a good lick there. That's it. Suddenly, there's another surprise arrival. Owner Marie calling from New Zealand. Hey, Marie. We got six bundles of joy for you, Nana. You're doing a wonderful job. Greta gets all the credit. She's, she's doing all the hard work here. And I think there's another one on the way very shortly. Oh, yep, here we go. We got another one. Here we go. Yay! Wow. Marie has just been to her mother's funeral today. This would have to be one of the saddest days of Marie's life. But seeing these puppies being delivered, I think it's quite healing. Oh my gosh, that one caught me completely by surprise. <laughs> An emotional Marie is overjoyed to witness the arrival of three more puppies. She doesn't seem to be having any problem at all. She's been great. But no one can relax just yet as a tenth puppy okay. arrives. I was going to give that to you. This tiny puppy is in trouble. Very lively. Come on, sweetheart. I delivered the tenth pup and I just know there's something wrong. Come on, breathe. Come on, little baby. I just hope there's something we can do to bring this pup through. Yes, we know. Come on. We are trying, honey. The puppy's heartbeat is faint and it's not breathing. I really want to be able to save this little girl. I'm also aware that Marie's on, she's watching all of this. And I can only wonder what she must be going through at the moment. Is it not responding? No, it's only been doing this for a while. Mm -hmm. G and Judith are working on this little pup, but I know from G's face that he's really not getting any response. No movement at all. We've lost the fight for this little girl. No, I'm sorry. 
I've lost one, Mary. I'm sorry. We're all devastated, but we've got to get back to Greta because she's still got more puppies to deliver. Good girl. And she's going to need all the support she can get. Oh, that was a big push, that one. She's looking really tired, eh? I think she's given it everything to this point. Greta, you're a good girl, darling. This one's coming backwards. It's puppy number 11. Oh, that's the whole thing. No, there's not much movement. Come on, come on. All right, Droid, I'm going to hand this one to you. Three, one, yep. two. Yep, you got Yep. Oh, come on. Come on, we got a light one. Yay. Can you hear that, Marie? Yeah, I can. There's a lot of strength in this one. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what a great noise that is, hey? That's a relief to hear that. Nice pink little nose. It means she's taking lots of oxygen into her nice dry lungs. I think there's one more on the way, and I. We just need her to get this last one out. Come on. He's moving. He's moving, Marie. Lucky last. Pretty big for the last one. Six. It's a boy. <laughs> hey, that's your last baby. Good girl, Greta. The last puppies arrive. How's that little one going? Hey? Yes. And they look great. They're in good health. Greta, she looks tired. We're all pretty tired, actually. <laughs> Very proud of Greta. She's a good mummy. You've done an awesome job, Alex and Gerardo. Mm -hmm. And Judith and Mouse. Thank you so much. I think we've all done a fantastic job, but the credit has to go to Greta. Eleven of Greta's puppies have made it, but they'll have to be closely monitored over the next few critical days to make sure they're healthy. You just come home safely, Nana, and you're Extended family will be waiting for you when you get here. <laughs> it's a big family. It sure is. You're going to be one busy nana. Is your babies? Yes. Marie is now back from New Zealand and has her hands full helping Greta with her thriving family. Good babies. And they're about to get some very excited visitors. I'm oh, really looking forward to seeing those puppies, honey. Yeah. Alex and Gerardo are keen to see how the newly expanded family is doing. Oh my goodness, is that not the cutest thing? Gosh, she's so attentive, isn't she? She's doing a really good job. Greta looks fantastic. She's obviously loving her new mum life. She's looking after them, she's in there making sure they're okay. She just looks like she's born to do this. It's more like puppies. One of the things we wanted to do today was actually do a little health check on the pups, but once you see them walking around in their little crate, crawling around, making puppy sounds and suckling healthily, there's, there's nothing we needed to do. They just looked amazing. Now your eyes are open, there's no stopping you guys, I'm sure. I've seen lots of puppies born before, but these guys, this is really special because Marie's part of our family at the hospital and because I was part of bringing them into the world and seeing them now, it's a special moment. And this week's number one. Still on a working holiday in Australia, Scott's paying his fellow vet Rob a surprise visit at his Sydney practice. Hey Rob, how's it going? Hey, Scott. <laughs> Good to see you mate. Thank you too well. I heard you were in town, what are you doing here? Well, I thought that I would give you my day off. Done deal, <laughs> I've got lots to do, come Dear. on this okay. way. Okay, all right then, let's no, get to it. Surprise. Their first patient is six-year-old Anna, who's due to give birth to her first litter. Owner Faye has had a love affair with German Shepherds for more than half a century. We had our first litter, I remember the date actually, 10th of August 1968, we had our first litter. And then just been breeding on ever since then. All right. Well, we got her pregnant. <laughs> That's good. So we had... An AI, Scott, and she had stretches, but I need to check and see if the stretches have gone. I don't think they have. Yeah. A couple of days ago, they were still present. Anna, she has a stretcher that's literally the vaginal canal is just way too tight. We know things are too tight and they're not going to open up. A puppy will get stuck. 
that could kill the puppy and could even endanger her life. Oh dear, he's donning a glove, that's never a good thing. Hey? Rob will examine Anna to see if it's safe for the first time mother to give birth naturally. Yeah, no, she doesn't like it, She's, it's too tight in this hoodie. So, all right, baby, that's all done. Good girl. Here we no go. choice here, no choice here. We'll do a caesarean. Okay. So I think she's in that mode of going, you know what, I just want them out of me. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. How are you feeling about the caesarean? Are you worried at all? No, not with Robert doing it. No. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Seal of approval. Looking good. It's good to hear. Well, I don't know, you're looking a bit nervous, but I'm sure it's going to be just fine. We'll do it for you. It's amazing to chat with Faye, a really experienced breeder. She's been doing this longer than I've been alive. So even though I'm a vet with a lot of experience, I think she's seen more puppies born than I have. So Faye, have you got a family sweepstake about how many puppies she's gonna have? No, uh, not really. Should no. we do one now? I'm gonna say it's 10. About 10, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> about six or so. Six, okay. Rob? Go for seven. Okay, all right, so he's closer to you. All right, maybe I'm just wishful thinking. <laughs> Rob and I will take care of her for you and we'll take care of all these babies yes. and get them back to you as soon as we can. See what they look like. I have a sense they're going to look like a German Shepherd. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I've known Faye since I was a kid. She was in German Shepherds then, uh, and so was I, and she just loves her dog. Anna, she's got such a beautiful temperament. Good girl. Well done. Well, I know, baby. Okay. Sleep time now. Mm -hmm. When you wake up, you'll have lots of cute puppies. As well as the surgical team, there's an interested onlooker in the theatre to see Anna become a mum. So, yeah, look, I've always brought owners in so they can be part of the process with their girl. It's really important. But with Faye, she's been through it quite a few times. She loves her dog so much. In the UK, when I bring patients in with their owners, normally at the point of doing the surgery, the owners will exit stage left. But you are going to stay for the whole procedure? Yes, you sure. I'm my love. Yeah. yeah. I'm a bit shocked that Faye is in the operating theatre. A bit of a surprise. For anyone that knows caesareans, they're not pretty, they're very messy, but Faye seems to be completely fine about it. Have you seen one of these procedures performed before? Yes. Her mother. <laughs> Her mother? Yeah. It's just amazing, I think. It's very brave. We don't even get you a seat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to have to watch myself and do the best job possible. I'm feeling a bit of pressure now. <laughs> do you ever have any fainters? Uh, oh, yes. And it's usually the bigger guys. You've got to tell them, as yeah. soon as you feel hot, please sit, sit down. down. And they don't. And it's a hard four. I tell them, very hard four. And I won't be able to pick them up. I'm going to do the work. That's right. Well, we're focused <laughs> on the dogs. Delivering Anna's babies will be a family affair for Rob. Thank you. Daughter Ainsley is a nurse in the practice. <laughs> you take the cost skills are amazing. <laughs> because you're working with your dad, you feel the need to just abuse him every time. <laughs> Sorry. So who's on puppy catching duty today? Laura. You two, three? Lovely. With Anna expecting a large litter, Scott and Rob will need every available family and staff member for the job ahead. Goodness me, Faye. Wow, there's more. Oh, look, there's our first one. Already got a movement there, Faye. Okay, girls, who's got this one? There it is. Done. Caesareans, it's kind of a frenzy of activity. There's puppies being thrown in all different directions, but it's all to get the process done as quickly as possible. The key thing is we want to get those puppies out as soon as we can and get them breathing. The swinging is just about trying to empty their lungs, the fluid, to get them to start breathing. Oh, it's always amazing to have all the hands you can have. Generally, you have the nurses, then you have the other vets, and then you get the receptionist, and then you get the bloke walking down the road, and the lady walking with the trolley, just. Any hands are good hands. A lot easier because you were here, I tell you, you made life a lot better for him. <laughs> we might keep him here in the spray. <laughs> you may not be able to go home. More here. More. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Well done. I've done heaps of caesareans in my time. One day I did eight caesareans in one day, but what keeps me going is that you're bringing life into the world. It's just, it's magical. 
How are we going, ladies? All breathing? And they're coming out nice and healthy, and they're coming out thick and fast as well. As the healthy puppy count rises, attention turns to who's ahead in the litter guessing sweepstakes. Somebody's there? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. 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 Scott was the closest. <laughs> so I think she must have known it was the first and last litter, so she didn't really put it on. Oh my god. All right, Dr. Scott won the sweepstakes. Yeah. You guessed 10. I was way down, I was on seven. Absolutely rubbish. He's a great vet, he's just rubbish at choosing how many puppies there are. Hey Ainsley, can I ask you, your dad, does he not like losing? It's sort of showing right now. I always win, so he's You always, oh fine, yeah, well, yeah, I'm sure. Someone's got to lose. <laughs> With all 10 of her offspring healthy, the focus now is how new mum Anna is faring after giving birth to such a mammoth litter. How's she doing, Ainsley? All good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Faye, do you want to come and see your new puppies? Look at these. Okay. Quite two litters in one, isn't it? You can pop your hand in there if you like. Oh, look at them. Oh, what a good mum. How many puppies do you think she was going to have? About six. You must feel really embarrassed right now. Do you I feel do, embarrassed? Yes, yeah, yes. yeah, no, that's, that's fair. That's I fair. just thought the probably big ones. <laughs> well, these are big too. <laughs> so many. They're so gorgeous. Look at them. I think it's amazing that Faye is in the operating theatre showing her Anna's gorgeous puppies. She does seem a little bit intimidated. She's got a lot of experience in looking after puppies, but 10 is a lot. One, two, three, go. Okay. Save girl. Yeah. So you can hear that beautiful sound in the background. That's uh, the sound of this gorgeous dog's puppy. So she's just recovering now, so it's a perfect time to put puppies on mum and give them their first drink. Two boys, Scott. Ah, lovely. Boys are always very hungry. <laughs> Look, there's your mummy. There she is. It's Bob. You're on the milk bar. Yeah. yeah. And still for me, after all these years, I love doing it. I love getting those puppies breathing and then the mother you know, accepts the puppies. You wait with her while she does that. Oh, it's just a beautiful feeling. There you go. That one. It's lovely to see Anna recovering from the anaesthetic. Her puppies are taking their first sips of milk. Things are looking good for Anna's new beautiful family. And I'm sure together with Faye, enjoy a wonderful life. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way. That way. <laughs>